Good morning on the uh, RV Solars channel. Today and possibly throughout the week, we're gonna be working on different RVs, trying to either repair them, add solar, do something to them one way or another. Uh, so we got one here, they spent the night last night and we are going to take a look and see what's going on. They just said uh, they got a system, it's not working right or something like that. They'll refresh my memory, I'm sure. Lynn. And here's Annie. A uh, a new a new dog is showing up uh, with the customers here. We're gonna see what's going on in there. Uh, what is this? A Bigfoot? It is, yeah. All right, so we're gonna see what's going on here in a minute. <clears throat> All right, so up here on the roof, uh, uh, what we were getting was there was basically no voltage getting to the solar controller right now. So I went up, checked all the connections here. We are getting voltage here, so. We're looking good there. Sometimes there'll be a uh, inline fuse that will pop. We've seen that before. Uh, <clears throat> you gotta be careful when you're inline fusing that uh, if you do it, that you're sizing it correctly. But in this case, uh, that's not the issue at all because I'm, I'm not finding one there and, and there is voltage here now. Uh, the reason why I say that is uh, there's plenty of cases when you don't even need them at all. You do, I would recommend a disconnect, but that should be down further below so we're gonna keep following it basically uh diagnosing process here is find voltage and keep following it to the controller until you lose voltage all right so i think we found our problem uh we're looking in this compartment here this is underneath the dinette and uh there was a fuse in a fuse holder and this fuse does not look happy now interestingly enough the fuse never popped as you can see there however the fuse holder melted. And I do see this from time to time. It's one of the reasons I'm trying to get away from fuses whenever possible. So I think what we're gonna do is swap that out to a breaker. I don't think anyone did anything wrong. There's nothing malicious here, but uh, something I would recommend and something to consider. So I think we're gonna swap that out for a dive wheel breaker set and uh, they should be back up and going. All right, we're gonna get the uh, Get the pups some treats here for their, their morning treats. We got bear, you get one, okay. Zuki, uh, bear, you didn't even want it. Zuki, you get one. And Annie, Annie, come here. This is new pup. <laughs> Not for long, just a guest here. You get a treat too, good girl. All right, we've got this just mocked up here and uh, good news, we do have there voltage go. going to, oh, there now it cooked, go. okay. We do have, uh, Volts flow into the uh, charger and the charger appears to be working. Initially, I was a little concerned it wasn't showing anything, but there are no amps to the battery, but it just took a little bit to wake up and decide to start working. So, oh, it's already in absorption because you were on shore power all night. But yeah. Yeah, you should be in good shape now. Holy cow. So here's something else uh, we ran across on this install. Uh, it's just looking, getting ready to do the, uh, some, programming and double checking some settings on the multi plus here and we're getting about uh, 335 watts of load but there's nothing on in here correct that's correct okay yeah. so the question is well what's actually on and what's on i felt it right away when we were in here i felt some heat from here this is your converter yeah. i'm almost certain that unless it could be your water heater but i i think your converter is still on and connected. Let's take a look here. There's a... Uh, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, that's the air conditioner that's off. There's the converter okay. right there. Yep, so turn that one off. And now, so you see the, the loads came off. So what had been happening through for this system, because uh, the, the customer had been, you, you'd been noticing that you were running out of power all the that's time. That's exactly. So what was happening is your, your MultiPlus was energizing the converter the converter was trying to charge the batteries, and the batteries are powering, yes, exactly. You had a circle going. <laughs> okay. Happens all the time. I do recommend leaving that on. We used to just flat out disconnect them all the time. Now, when I say on, what I really mean is that the wires are still connected to the breaker, and that'll be important later. So just keep that in mind. Um, and we still, I guess, may have to, We'll do some checks here. Okay. Sometimes that breaker is connected to more than just the converter. Okay. Um, but 
I recommend leaving it on because if anything were to happen to the Multi Plus, you can still charge your batteries from that system then. Okay. Like if, if you had to turn that off, then this will charge. But you only want one on at a time. You don't want them both. That's good to know. Okay, so we're going to get back to programming this then. It's just when you think uh, you got her figured out, sometimes you don't. So got the uh, cover off on the Lynx distributor here. What we were trying to track down was uh, after we turned off the converter, none of the 12-volt power worked, including the fridge, nothing. And uh, what we ended up finding was bad was this little thermal breaker. Um, they're usually about 50 amps, and I replaced it in there. And the symptom from this was uh, this over here quit working. I, I guess the telltale sign was that wasn't working anymore. And uh, so what I did to figure that out is I just kind of traced back um, from here, the positive here, and just kept tracing it back. And then I noticed there was no power on either side of that solenoid. And that kind of what led, is what led me to this, because I know this power typically feeds it. So anyway, I've never had this fail, but uh, the more you know. So doing some more talking with the customer and thinking a little bit, they do have the Orion uh, 121230, and it was likely being fed through that same breaker that we just replaced. So with that in mind, I think that may have been the culprit of why that failed. All right, a couple other things we took care of here. Uh, we sealed up this fridge vent a little, or the fridge uh, connection where the solar was put down. Uh, because these are ammonia based, we definitely want to make sure this stays sealed as much as possible. So took care of that. And we also uh, resealed the uh, screw holes that we took off on the fridge vent on the top. And we'll put this guy back on. But uh, other than that, everything's put back together in here. Everything's working good now. It was good uh, getting them sorted out here and uh, gave some tips on where to go camping in Minnesota. Love the North Shore, so recommended that and a whole bunch of places up north and even a couple of places around here. So I'm gonna get the cart back inside our scaffold here and, and maybe grab some lunch and we'll see what else we're gonna do today. I'm just gonna get some uh, soda coffee here, some cold brew I make. Because uh, I need some coffee to do some thinking and some talking. Let's talk about some things. All right, we got a major new development here. This is my hand. This is a moth. It's real. It's not fake. I don't know what it is. It's a moth. If it bites me, um, this may be the last recording we, you ever see of me. All right, it might be tired. We, we probably just woke it up, that's our problem. All right, let's talk for a moment about this little fuse and what it means to me and I guess how I feel about them. And I'm also gonna talk about some other things in this uh, bin here that, uh, and I'm gonna be adding this to it. Basically, this is an example, this bin is filled with other failures and we're going to talk about some of those. Okay, so <clears throat> let's zoom in here a little bit more. The problem I have with fuses like this, or really fuses in general, is that as a function of their design, they have to get hot. That's the only way that this works. That little piece of metal there gets hot enough to melt and blow. And this is a 30 amp fuse. This is what was causing the problem in that uh, project earlier today. But what happens if it's pulling 25 amps, 28 amps for an hour, two hours? Well, that little piece of metal is getting to maybe 100, 300 degrees, who knows what. And then the fins are, or you know, the other blades there are also getting really hot. And that I believe <clears throat> is why this eventually failed, which has led us to why we, and one of the reasons why we use the breakers like this so often, because these work on a different principle and they don't. I want to say it's magnetic or, or uh, some other element heats up in there that trips it. But this isn't the only thing. Uh, what about, can class T fuses fail? Yep, they can fail too. <laughs> I wish you could smell this. This smells horrible. But one of these failed. 
Um, what else? What about disconnect switches? Yep, those can fail too. This is why we went to these. So far, we've not had one of these fail. It's not like this. Now, you, you do a loose connection. Uh, you know, that, there's nothing that's going to help you there. But uh, in these cases, there were not loose connections, or at least I don't believe there were. Um, it was just kind of a, a function of what they do. They were getting hot because when you run them close to their breaking point or their melting point in some cases, that's just what happens. Here's some other examples here. Some fuse holder. This is what it n normally looks like. This should not even be sold. I got some other things in here. I think this is what was left of that one. Yeah, this is just... Anyway, be careful about fuses, kids. Well, we've had a great day together, and uh, we got a lot done. Uh, we got another project in here that we're working on, and uh, we'll share a little bit more about that tomorrow. But... Uh, uh, until next time, uh, we'll catch you later and thank you for watching like comment, subscribe. And, uh, I'm going to leave you with a little video of, uh, a tuckered out bear. Oh, is somebody all done? Is somebody all done today? Somebody's all done. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Such a big boy. We'll do a big old pause. He's, he had a hard day. He's a hard working solar dog.